So once you have measured your the width of your dog's neck, you can get your kit together. And um, this kit I got from Country Brook Design, and uh, there will be a link to their website in the description box below. And the kit that I got here is for dog collars, and it's pretty neat because it came with everything you need to make um, quite a few collars. Uh, anyway, you get a roll of the nylon webbing, and you have your choice of colors, um, and you get a pack of these, I think they call them the male and female snaps or something like that. And you get the D-rings, which are the large D-rings, and you want a nice heavy D-ring. Um, if you're ordering like just the pieces you need to make one or two collars, then you need to know that these, you know, you want to hold your, your dog's uh, information tag on there and it to be able to hold the leash without it pulling apart. These are nice strong D-rings. And then you've got these um, tri-glides and you're going to need one of these for the project. So basically, what I've done is set out what I need. I need a male and a female piece for the buckle. I need one D-ring and I need one tri-glide and I need the nylon webbing. Okay, so with this kit you also kind of get um, you get a little instruction guide on how to make it and I don't know if I have something missing from my kit but this shows that little piece like he has on this collar to keep that tri-glide from sliding in the package so it's probably my fault. I just ordered a couple of things so I could do tutorials but anyway it, it just gives a basic idea of what you need to do. It shows you the stitches that you need to use and one of the first thing it says which I, I really like is that you you need to have a knowledge of your sewing machine. I, I get so many questions and I understand everybody's got to start somewhere but sometimes really y'all Okay, so Pedro's neck was about 14 inches around, and that's with a little give. When you measure, you want to keep in mind that when you go around and measure the animal's neck, you want to be able to get two fingers in there easily without having to push them in because you don't want to choke your dog to death. So he's 14 inches. I figure this collar, um, when you stretch everything out, is probably about 24 to 25 inches, just way too much. I'm going to do... I'm actually going to do um, 19 inches. No, let's do 20. I'm going to do 20 inches. Now the first thing I'll do after I have my pieces cut is I want to go ahead and burn the ends because it's going to immediately start fraying. It's just the material that it is so you just need to burn it till you stop that fray. You don't want to, you're not starting a campfire here. Oops, sorry. So now that I've got that burned, I want to add a little bit of flair to Pedro's collar because he's kind of a sassy little pup. So what I'm going to do is I have a strip of 5 8 of an inch gross grain, gross grain I guess that's called, ribbon. And I'm going to cut it to the exact length of the collar. And you want to do the same thing with it. You want to burn the tips of the ends of it so that it doesn't fray as well. Next step is going to be to lay this cross grain ribbon on here and center it and then I'm just going to stitch down both sides. Okay, so our next step after we have, if you're going to do a, a top ribbon on this like I did. Then the next step after that is you want to add this tri-glide and you could kind of look at the collar that you already have if you have one for your dog and see how that's done. It can be a little confusing as well but we're gonna work it. So this tri-glide kind of has you see it almost has like a top and a bottom like the bottom is flat and the top is arched so we want to take this webbing and we're going to, but it is about one and three quarter inches folded over. 
you got it on here like this and you always want to do a box stitch when you do something like this because you want this sucker to stay on you don't want it to come loose your dog could end up getting away and getting hurt so I'm gonna do a box stitch and what I'm gonna do is just trying to keep that tri-glide out of the way I'm gonna stitch a box around the end of this ribbon right here okay so there you see I've got my little X box <laughs> my little X sewn into the thing here so now so the next step is you have your collar piece facing like this with the top facing the bottom and you want to take your I'm pretty sure it's called the male piece but I can't remember what exactly it's called the male buckle piece and you're going to go in from this way and then like this because you want that yeah and then you want to feed it through the tri-glide so you see so then you want to take the male piece and you're gonna feed no gotta go ahead and put this we're gonna go ahead and put the ring on. I couldn't think of what it was called. I hope you guys didn't miss any of that. I think I might have been out of camera range. And then you just want to go through this like this. And this is where it gets kind of tricky because I know they've got special machines in the factories and stuff. And you see how close that stitch is. We're just not going to get that close. But you can go ahead and keep that D-ring out of the way for now. I'm going to get all of that stuff out of the way. And then I'm going to take this. And you want to leave plenty of room. Right here is where this one ends. You want plenty of room for your D-ring. And I still I want to make sure I've got enough for Pedro to wear it. So I'm going to take this to the machine. And I want to go ahead and stitch close to this buckle piece here but that's all I'm going to do for right now. I'm just going to stitch close to that buckle piece. So now that I've got that stitched we want to bring this yeah we want to bring that D-ring up there and we're going to stitch on the other side of the D-ring and this time I didn't do it here but I did I didn't um, make a box stitch here because there's just not enough room I would recommend cutting a little bit more um, webbing maybe three or four inches more because you're going to use it up in this process and since we don't have those special machines to do all this close stitching and stuff we need that extra room for the stitching but I'm going to pull the D-ring right up to that stitch and I did plenty of back stitching there to keep that in place and I'm going to sew on the other side of the D-ring. And this time I'll make a box. I gotta admit y'all, I love this. I, I don't know why, but it just, it, this is something that just, it seems so much better when you make it yourself. And I am just, <laughs> so this is it, and I should say that now. This is our collar. It's all done. It's ready for your little pet to wear. If you can possibly find that little piece like this collar has on it, and I think Country Book Design might have it. Um, if a rep is watching this video and could comment and let me know, I'll put that um, on top of the video later so that they can see that it's there but I didn't see them I looked for them wasn't even sure what to call them but it would be helpful because see you got this kind of gap right here if you don't have it but um definitely I love this and it's so sturdy so now Pedro has a new collar and we're just gonna see how he likes it that nice too look at there 
Pedro. I want to see your collar. No, let me see the collar. There you go. There you go. So I think he kind of likes it. Yeah. Anyway, that is a really simple tutorial, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace, y'all. Bye-bye.